Hi, I'm Jonas and this is the OMP Hobby M2 and today we're going to talk about a little feature OMP implemented mid of 2020 into the flight controller which is TALI, as I like to call it, torque assisted left y'all. To understand what this feature does we have to backtrack a little because the OMP Hobby M2 is a helicopter that uses a tail motor with a fixed pitch propeller to drive the tail and as you may know a helicopter spins its main rotor to generate lift okay this is getting very basic and that induces a torque on the fuselage that tries to twist it the other way so what we do generally if we're on a single rotor configuration we add a tail rotor which produces a thrust which is offset from the CG which produces a torque to counteract the main rotor torque if you produce just enough thrust you can hold the tail steady while maneuvering with the main rotor so far so good so what OMP has done because this tail motor is limited in its capacity can only push in this direction so when you're flying normally flying around this is not a concern but when you get into 3d there are maneuvers where you don't just need thrust in this direction you may also need some sort of torque to twist the body to the left if we want more acceleration to the left what they have done is they blip the main rotor throttle to get an instantaneous burst of torque because like there have been experiments with reversing tail motors which did not work out because it's too slow you could add another tail motor that pushes in the other direction but that adds weight complexity points of failure so pretty simple tr trick speed up the main rotor to get more torque to the left and that pretty much allows you to get instantaneous acceleration to the left even if your main rotor is unloaded. So let's take a look at what that looks like in action. We're gonna spool up the helicopter without the blades. Okay, and now it's at flight RPM and what you will find is that you have two noises, the tail motor noise and the main rotor noise, which you're hearing now. So if we yaw the helicopter to the left, the tail motor compensates by speeding up. Listen. Okay, so far so good. Tail motor speeds up, compensates. But what happens when we yaw to the right is you will hear the main rotor speed up. So here it's sped up now and trying to compensate for this right yaw motion by increasing the torque on the body. So if we yaw it back, it returns back to normal. Same thing if we control it with the stick. Right yaw, speeds up the tail motor. Left yaw, speeds up the main rotor. And these two kind of work in unison as a combined tail control mechanism. So the main rotor pretty much extends the torque envelope of the tail rotor. So we have control both against the torque and increased authority with the torque. Okay, so now that we know what it looks like when the blades are off, let's discuss what it actually does for you in flight. So, most obvious thing is pirouette. So, Hello. Oh. so imagine you're in a hover and trying to start a pirouette to the left. In a hover, you're not particularly high on torque. You're just producing enough lift to keep the helicopter airborne. There's not much load on the motor. It's generally one of the more gentle flight envelopes. So when you just give it full left yaw, that little torque that's on the main rotor has to accelerate this heavy fuselage to the left. Without any enhancements like TALI, the tail rotor would just go to the left idle stop and let the torque do the thing. And that basically looks like this if we exaggerate it a bit. So it starts kind of slowly and then gets up to speed until it reaches the target rate. What TALI now does is when you give that left impulse, it blips the main rotor throttle, which spikes the torque because accelerating the main rotor, which is pretty inert in itself, takes a lot of torque. And that instantaneously translates to the fuselage and you get instant acceleration to the left. Another thing where this comes in handy is right rudder stops. So imagine you have a right rudder pirouette and you stop. What happens? The helicopter has rotational energy from the pirouette and wants to stop. So tail goes to left idle stop, main rotor produces a hover torque and the tail 
will slowly come to a stop but overshoot the position which you want it in and worst case it would bounce back a bit to the position where it should be so a stop would look like this and you can't have that in 3d so what they do is you command it to stop they blip the throttle tail stops it's pretty much against the wall so reversing left right left right it would just blip the throttle each time you reverse rpm rises we have more torque on the body, helicopter reverses instantly. Another thing where this comes in handy is when you unload the main rotor, because as you unload the main rotor, you are taking off torque from the body. And let's imagine you're flying rainbows. So you come to a rainbow stop and you enter pretty much auto rotation. What happens is the main rotor still spins, but there's no load on the body at all because you're in auto rotation. And now you have a drag from the bearings and the motor, which tries to yaw the helicopter to the right. Same problem as always, tail can only go to left idle stop, no torque to the left. So what it does is, when you enter auto rotation, it blips the throttle until the main rotor is driven by the motor again, which imposes a torque on the body and holds the tail where it needs to be. Last case where this would be important would be flying backwards. So imagine we have the helicopter, like this, flying towards you. Now you can imagine, if it's just flying straight, there's not much to worry about. But some people fly themselves kind of intentionally into situations where the tail will not hold anymore. So for example, if you bias the tail a bit, like this, to the left, and the helicopter flies forward like this. If you now unload the main rotor, the torque from the main rotor drops and since you're flying like this you have the oncoming wind push onto the tail which will then better wane it around until it's pretty much turned 180 degrees and the helicopter flies forward without you ever commanding it so what Tali now does is you're flying backwards unloading it which you should not do on a motor tail but you do it anyway the helicopter will start to swing out Tali will sense this raise the main rotor rpm so that with the remaining collective you get enough torque on the body again to counteract this weather veining and the helicopter will keep flying in the direction you command it. This also happens in tunnels when you have a direct wind on the tail trying to push it around. You can really hear it speed up sometimes. We will also probably hear this later in flight footage and it helps you compensate for all the shortcomings of a tail motor system. So let's take a look at what this does in flight. Okay, so we are gonna start out with something almost everyone can try out. Curls in a hover. So, with a normal motor tail, when you want to do a left pyro, the motor would go to the left idle stop and the helicopter would accelerate solely from the low hovering torque from the main rotor. What Tally now does is it lifts the throttle and we get instant acceleration for our tail. Do that again. You can hear it blip a little bit. I'll come a bit closer so you can hear it better. And basically, in, uh, it enhances our acceleration. With a motor tail, it will look something like this. With a non tally motor tail. Same is for stops from right heroes. We pretty much get instant stops instead of a little overshoot, which looks something like this. You see, the tail stops exactly when I let go of the stick. So I can basically bounce the stick and the tail will stop. With a non tail eye tail, it would look something like this. It would overshoot and bounce back. I cannot really simulate this because I cannot do the dynamics with my fingers, but oh well. Uh, same is for reversals. These are pretty much instant as well. So you can reverse pirouettes on a dime instantaneously where a non tail eye tail would lag and be slow okay so but what about actual flying so let's do some flying and take a look for example backwards flying we're gonna fly backwards and what i can do now is i can bias the tail a bit downward and a non tail eye tail would now be prone to swinging around so i can emulate this as well so we're gonna fly backwards and i'm gonna show you what it would look like without tail so we fly backwards and then the tail would basically weather vane like this 
But since we have tail line, I can even provoke this by unloading the tail. You can hear the main rotor RPM climbs to hold the tail. Same for upright flying. If I fly backwards quickly and unload the tail, it will turn out just ever so slightly until tail line catches it. It will never swing around completely, which is a huge advantage for flying backwards if you're not going full collective all the time. Obviously, if you're going full collective, you always have torque to support your tail, so you will be good. Same thing with pure reversal. So we can do pyro flips. We can reverse these pyro flips instantaneously to the left and the wind is pretty heavy right now. If you have been watching my videos, you know I'm not a left rudder pilot, but I'm trying my best to show you what happens when we reverse pirouettes. This is also one of the huge advantages that you get instant left acceleration during pyro reversal so you can immediately follow up with your cyclic movement. Another thing is things where you just drag the tail like funnels. You can hear tail eye working here because I just flew into the wind with the tail on the left idle stop and tail eye keeps it loaded. Another thing is when we fly backwards, loops and unload it on the way down, Talai will hold it by increasing the main rotor RPM. Let's just have some fun with the rest of this battery. Do some rainbows. Rainbows, you can enter all the rotation at the end of the rainbow, even with such a small helicopter. And tail eye will also prevent the tail from swinging out here. We'll keep it pretty much rock solid and steady. Another thing people are worried about are tail slides. And my battery is empty. Okay, just imagine I did the tail slide and it held the tail perfectly. So yeah, that's pretty much what tail eye does in Flight Korea. Thanks for watching.